Hello and welcome to Thriftcart. In this video, let's take a look at the inventory count sheet. To run this report, in your left hand menu, select reports, and then point of sale reports, and then find the inventory count sheet report. Now note that this report by default runs as of today, so it shows inventory as of today, but you can set an alternate date range. For example, you can backdate the report to the end of a fiscal year. To do so, click on the blue words that say click here to set alternate date, and then put in the date for which you want to run your inventory for. Select the gray button, set date, and you'll see the new date reflected here on top. Now everywhere in this report that you see the gray button make sheet, it indicates another way to run the report. So here we see the make sheet button as I scroll down there are additional make sheet buttons further below. Again, these are just alternate ways to run the report. Jumping back here to the top, let's take a look at running a report by category. So first, choose your store location. Next, select a parent category or a subcategory from the drop-down menu of your categories. Depending on how much inventory you have in your store, you may have to select a parent category or even a subcategory as opposed to your categories as a whole so that the report does not time out while running. In other words, if you have lots of inventory in your store and you attempt to run the report on just the parent category selection where it's running a report for all the inventory in your store and even potentially inventory that has sold, the report may take too long to run and time out before it generates. So you might have to filter the report down to various categories or even subcategories in order for it to not time out before generating. In this case, I'll run the report on the appliances category. I'll select the option to hide comments and descriptions from the report. Note that you can run the report to show only items displayed on your web store if you have an integrated web store with Thriftcart. In this case, I'll go ahead and leave that checkbox unselected as I want to include inventory on the web store or not. And then I'll select Make Sheet. After a handful of seconds here, the report has generated. And we see a list of the thrift cart item numbers, item names, prices, system counts, and cost if this was purchased product and cost was entered. Notice toward the top left corner, there's a button to export the report to Excel. You can also select Control P on your keyboard to print the report to a PDF. You could print the PDF and take it to your store floor to perform inventory counts, marking down on the paper actual inventory counts, and then return to Thriftcart to log any inventory adjustments that might need made. Now upon coming back to Thriftcart, don't forget to refresh your screen, just in case it's been past 15 minutes and Thriftcart has automatically logged out. This way, you don't record the adjustments, attempt to save them, only to find out that Thriftcart has timed out and your adjustments were not recorded and saved. Now you'll notice that there are a number of system counts here of zero. So that is inventory that has sold or that has been adjusted out. Note that there is also record of inventory here with a negative count. If a cashier scans a barcode or enters an item number to sell a product that has already been sold down to a count of zero, Thriftcart will still let them sell additional items even into the negative. Ideally this wouldn't happen and might indicate a mistake or flawed process in inventory management. Scrolling further down, we see some product with positive inventory counts essentially product still on hand. At the bottom of the report, that you can quickly get to by selecting the end key on your keyboard, you can see a total count of distinct items, your total retail value, total items, and total cost. Notice that the retail value, items, and cost are all currently reported in the negative, as there are several items that have been reportedly sold into the negative included in this report. Now it is an option to run the report excluding these zero count items 
and excluding negative count items as well, or alternately, running the report to include only those with a negative count. To do so, go back to your report and select the blue words that say click here to set other options. In this case, I want to run the report and hide those items with a zero count and also hide the items with a negative count. I'll select the gray button to set options. Next, I'll reset the store location, set the category to appliances, again hide comments and description, and select make sheet. After a handful of seconds, the report runs, and you'll notice this time it is much shorter. Looking at our total line, we only have five distinct items, total retail value of 316.91, total system count of 13 items, and a cost of $45. Notice that the price, system item count, and cost are all positive numbers this time, as the negative count items are removed. The difference between these five distinct items and 13 total items is that the distinct items refer to item IDs, while the system count refers to the total individual pieces of product, and some product might have the same item ID. For example, we see here that there are nine items with the ID of 1532. If you want to learn more about the inventory count sheet, please check our additional video on running the inventory count sheet by keyword, supplier, and source type. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for watching.